We're going to start by looking at this image which we've gotten from a balloon. Uh, this is actually done by Riverkeeper and the Gresset's Mappers in New York City. Uh, and it's of the Newtown Creek at the north of Brooklyn. So here's a map that's already been started with a couple images placed, but this new image actually gives us a little bit more information about this end of it. So what we're going to do is actually click the Upload Image button. We're going to select that image. Hit Upload. You can see the progress down in the corner. And there you go. It highlights it to start with just so that you see where your new image is, because sometimes there's a lot of images on the page. So uh, just to get started, uh, you're already in the Distort tool. I'm going to click the Rotate tool, and you can see that the red uh, highlights show up, and just kind of drag this around. This is also the Scale tool, so I can get it to be neighborhood of the size I'll, I'll want it in. I'll drag this over here. It's not perfect, but it's, it's pretty close. So I'll try scaling a little bit more. And then what you want to do is uh, click the Image Outline button. And that's actually a pretty good fit already. That's probably maybe 50 centimeters, maybe better. But to really get a good look, we're going to want to turn off the other images. So uh, because you really want to be um, uh, aligning it with uh, your reference image. Otherwise, if you, you continue to align against other images, you'll, uh, you'll kind of begin drifting. Um, so what I've done is I've used the, the keyboard command O to just outline all the other images so they're kind of out of the way. And unfortunately we can't zoom in, any, in anymore here, um, you know, because ironically Google does not provide imagery that's high enough resolution. So we're just going to have to do our best here. You can kind of turn it on and off and see it's a little bit off. For adjustments like this I like to use the T button, uh, which is actually the correspondence to this image here, or this tool, the toggle image transparency. And then uh, we're going to try to raise this a little bit until it really kind of snaps, it fits. Uh, it worked there for a second. We're beginning to drift out. Oh, that was it. There you go. See how that grating there kind of really clicks? Let's uh, turn off transparency. And it looks like we're doing pretty good. Um, I might bring in this corner a little bit. But you have to remember that the version that you're looking at is actually a low-resolution version. Only when you uh, run the export uh, will it actually generate a full-resolution uh, output. So here we go. I'm going to lock that in place because I'm pretty confident about where it is. I'm going to turn off outlining on these. There are key commands for all, uh, most of the tools, so you can kind of get better as you go. And you can see, actually, that compared to this image, which is taken from a, quite an angle where the building is distorted, the new image we placed correctly locates that grating and gives us a little bit more of this pier along this side. So you repeat this for a number of images. You can see that this map has quite a few leading down to the cement factory here. Um, they're documenting a plume of cement that the company has actually been dumping. So uh, at a certain point, you're going to want to actually run an export. You click the Mac Map Export button. You have to prove that you're a human. Uh, we've had some spammers uh, or like spam bots come in and actually generate maps. And then you get these different map products. Um, the GeoTIFF is the most archival, uh, highest resolution version. But the Open Layers Viewer is also um, you know, uh, an option just for web viewing. So that's kind of a, a quick uh, way to get up and running with MapNitter. Uh, there are some more advanced tutorials on their way, and we'll be publishing them uh, on the publiclaboratory.org website. Thanks.